tonight. When you go home, don't just take everything off and think that you're done, but just kind of put it to the side. Eat, take a nap, don't sleep too long, but come on back to the house of God. Why? You are a child of God. Your family belongs to God. We worship him and him alone. You have your Bible? You please take your phone, put it on vibrate. And we're looking at a scripture text that we can bring something out from it. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 to 10, it is on the monitors. You are able to see the monitors from any place that you're sitting in the sanctuary. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 to 10, and please respect the house of God. Don't be on Facebook. Don't get on Instagram. I'm sure the ushers are watching and it's kind of disrespectful, but we love the Lord. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 to 10. Those three scripture texts that will bring out what God wants to say this morning to us. He's trying to show us. I'll be reading from the authorized version at times. Maybe the NLT or the Amplified will go there. But the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 to 10. But God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners. While we were yet doing our wrong. While we were smoking that cigarette, while we were drinking on that rum, while we were dating and doing this, while we were yet sinners, God committed his love toward us. Yet rebellious, liars and stubborn, God committed his love toward us. What did he do? Christ died for us. Can you tell your neighbor Christ died for you? Come on, tell somebody else around you. Christ died for you. He died for you. The Bible says, Much more than being now justified by his blood. I'm justified by his blood. We shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, by the death of his son. Much more. Being reconciled. We shall be saved. By his life. By his life. I want to talk to you from this question. Just kind of real nonchalant. Say this. What about his death? Say it again, real nonchalant. What about his death? What about his death? I'm going to talk to you from that angle. What about his death? What about it? Subtitle our song that we just sang Jesus, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Jesus, I'll never forget. I'll never, I'll never, I'll never forget. Let's pray. And let's ask God to help us to understand today. Shake off every sleep slumber demon that tries to come around on your world. And you may hear what God is saying this morning. Let us pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your loving kindness toward us, oh God. Thank you for allowing us to be here. For Lord God, we've come with a heart of praise and worship and thanksgiving. Father, they've come, Lord God, to the altar, your children, to dance unto you. To dance before the King, to clap our hands. To raise our voices, O oh God. The Bible is our open, God, and we're reading out of the word of the Lord. Our hearts are now open to receive what it is that you're saying to us. Father, I'm asking that you and Lord help. That water that's to my love, trouble that water of baptism. Father, get somebody right now, that mother, that have decided, God, today I'm going to do it. The mother that realizes I need to go down in Jesus' name and don't wait another day. Father, that wife, that husband, that young man and young lady that needs the Holy Ghost, God, that family that needs to be restored and delivered, the husband that needs the Holy Ghost, today is a good day, God, for you to fill them. I'm asking that you would open up our understanding. That the word be applied to our heart. Bring forth conviction, not condemnation. 
Help us to see what you're showing us, God, through this message. I pray that you help me articulate what it is that needs to be said. But you will get the glory. You will get the honor, and they will bless your name because you have saved us, oh God, redeemed us. In Jesus' mighty name, can we all say amen. Amen. Clap your hands one more time in Jesus' name. Amen. What about, what about his death? What about, what about his death? The Bible says to us, saying of God in Psalms 103, verses 1 through 4. Many of you that read your Bible, you would have read this. This is the Psalm of David, the psalmist. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. What else did he do? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. David goes on talking about the blessings of the Lord. He goes on to talk about what God has done. But if that second verse, if you go back to bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all, all, all his benefits. What are some benefits that God has given the human family? What are some benefits that God has given you and your family? What are some benefits and God is giving you individually. What are some benefits or some favors or some things that he has done? I will bless the Lord at all times. This is why that psalmist says this. Because if you and I just remember the benefits that we have. That the people of God, we should bless the Lord at all times. In many of our schools, there is a course or a class that should... I believe that should always be taught. And I believe that we should always be taught history. 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 Anybody that likes history in here. History. History. Amen. I believe this course must stay in our schools. History. History is the study of past events. Particularly in the human affairs. The human family of what has happened on this earth. It is a study of what took place before you and I were ever here. It is similar to the definition that we always say in the scriptures about things happening before you and I. It comes from Paul's words in Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things are written aforetime. For whatsoever things were written or whatsoever things happened before you and I ever got here, it was written down for our learning. And we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The understanding is that something was written and happened before you and I were here. And we are definitely, watch this, in a time where so many are so forgetful of the history. We so soon forget about what has happened in our history. There are maybe some things that we might remember that may trigger, depending on the time that you were born, the dispensation, or the time that you were born. Baby boomers and bloomers and all of those, if you go down there, X and generation and this and that, all of those, there are certain things you remember during your time. But people have got history, things that have happened in our history to allow us to get to where we are today. It is the benefits. People of God know what happened prior to us getting to this moment. Yes. I believe many have forgotten those who have died for us to get to this moment in life. Yes. That if you talk to a child today, give them a name about something that somebody did in the history. A lot of times our children, our young people will say, I don't know who that is. Yes. Yes. Amen. I don't know who they are. What did they do? Or they were said in a nonchalant. What about them? 
What about what they did? This is the human family. I believe many have forgotten those who have given up something for others to have. It is like young people, your mom and your dad, giving up their time just to make sure you have what you need. It is that mother that has given up, watch this, well, maybe she would like to go back to school, but she has given it up for what reason? To make sure she gets you through school. It is that father has given up his dreams to make sure that the family has what it needs. As a human family, we have forgotten the cries, forgotten those who have cried, shed tears, just for you and I to get here today. We've forgotten those who had late nights, staying up so late, praying out and asking God what to do. We've forgotten those that had tears coming down their face. Yes. Maybe it didn't happen for them, but they were hoping for the next generation. The hardships yes. that they went through, yes. the persecutions, and even death. For those who have lost their lives for us to have what we have today, so soon forgotten. <laughs> For example, a history lesson, those who died for America to be the land of the free. Yes. For those who died in America to be the land of the free. Yes, under the British ruling, George III, but then another man, George Washington, decided, I'm looking for the land of the free. How many of us forgotten for those whose lives have been slaughtered? just so that you and I can live in a land of the free. Those who died in the Civil War, North against the South states, it is stated that about 600,000 or more died for this cause. They died in regards to take power of the national government to prohibit or to stop slavery. So but when you talk about these that died in the Civil War, what about them? What about them? They're just old history pictures. People like Martin Luther King. Those who died just for the freedom. And you can be able to hear me just go to a water fountain and get some water. And you don't have to go to the back of the store or sit at the back of the bus. Just a small history lesson. For those people of God who have died for the sake of freedom. African Americans who were able to do what God placed on their hearts to do so that others could be free. Now hear me, Caucasians and Europeans who helped assist the Underground Railroad, they put their lives on the line. But so soon forgotten. For example, those who died in Pearl Harbor, when the Japanese attacked the American ships, understand people of God, you might not know this, but if they would have defeated America, you and I would be speaking Japanese right now. Yes. Did you hear me? Yes. You and I will be speaking Japanese right now. But because somebody decided to say, I'll fight. So since it says 2,400 or more died in Pearl Harbor attack. But because it happened so long ago, we forget about those who have died. For example, the firemen. It's not talked about much, but the firemen who died in 9-11. Oh, yeah. Many lives that were taken on that particular day. What were they doing? Trying to save other people. Some may not, were maybe not even born during this time, especially our younger ones. And I remember when that took place. But so soon forgotten of what they did. So, so forgotten that they were putting their lives going back into the building just to save people that were not even their family. Just going through the wells and up the stairs just to pull as many as they could knowing that any moment the building could collapse. And they put their life on the line. But what about them? What about them? For example, the mother who put her life on the line to go in the Uvalde Texas Elementary 
She showed up and the police trying to tell her. Ma'am sat back. She said, no, I'm going in. Basically, what they tried to do was arrest her to prevent her from going into the school. She said, if y'all not going in, I'm going in. But she went into the school and she got her babies out of that school. She went to that school not caring where the sniper was, but she wanted to get to her children because she felt that the police or the sheriff was taking too long to make their move. Now she made that move not knowing if she would even come out. But her mind was focused, watch, watch this, on her children. Why? Because of what? Love. Love. Her mindset was, I got to get minds out. 19 children killed and two adults died. Now this woman made up in her mind, I'm going to get minds. But I say to you and I pray that her children will never forget what she did for them. And as they get older, you know how we are. As children, they get older. Sometimes we get to that teenage stage and you feel like, as mama says, you're smelling yourself. Mama says you got a little hair on your chest and on your chin. But you forgot. And I pray, people of God, that we never forget. That we never forget about the one who died for us. His name is Jesus. I pray that you and I would know better to never forget, but it's the human family. We have so soon forgot who died for us. We so soon forgot the one who made our lives better. He is the one that, watched this, freed me from the chains that were on my mind, the chains and the addictions that were in my life. He is the one that died, that loved me before I ever knew him. Amen. Yes, we forgot. But I'm glad. I'm glad that he never forgot about me. Yes. I'm glad that, yes, I forget about him, but I'm glad that he never forgot about me. Right. This is why, tell your neighbor, I'm glad you're not God. Because if you were God, I would be dead. Yes. Yes. Tell him that. Yes. If you were God, I would be dead. If you were God, I would never be forgiven. Yes. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Somebody, if your husband is sitting next to you, say, if you were God, you would have still held on to all of that I've done. <laughs> if you were God. If you were God, I wouldn't be able to preach today. Yes. You would say, get off the stage. Yes man yes. if you are God I wouldn't be able to worship and praise you like we did today yes. if you were God Amen. Yes. look at your neighbor and say I'm so glad you're not God I'm so glad you're not God, so glad you're not God. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so glad you know, you're not God yes. I'm so glad you would tell me to sit down yes. I'm so glad you're not God yes. You will still be bringing up old stuff. Yes. See, with God, he says old things are passed away. I'm so glad that you're not God. With God, all things are no. I'm so glad you're not God. I'm glad you're not here. I would have been left. But the prophet speaks on behalf of God, letting us know how God felt about his people in the Old Testament. I learned, for what some of the things are written, I learned. Isaiah 49, verse 15, the Bible says this. Watch it. Can a woman forget her suckling child that should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, God is saying, yet I will never forget. You will not think a woman forget her child. But if it's possible for them to forget, God is saying, I'll never forget you. I'll never forget you. It is in the New Testament. The Hebrew, the Hebrew writer quotes these same words. And he's talking to the body of Christ, the church of the living God in Hebrews 13 and 5. He says, let your conversation be without covetousness. Let your behavior or your character be without covetousness. And be content with such things ye have. For he said, for ye have said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. We serve a God that has not forgotten about us. 
the God who saw the state that we were in and where we were going because of the state that we were in. If you testify on it today, you are headed to the devil's hell. We were headed to the devil's hell. Total damnation. But because somebody did not forget about me, because somebody didn't say, oh, this who? Because somebody didn't say, Mr. Garmin, who? Yes. Pastor Garmin, what? Yes. Because somebody just didn't just look at it nonchalant. But because somebody just remembered me on the cross. Yes. This is why the Bible says it lets us know that he came in the flesh, took upon the title son. This God, who's a spirit, took upon flesh, yes. took upon the title son. Right. Not three in one. But one God who manifested himself in different things, people of God. I say to you, it is Jesus. It is he, the spirit. That's God, the father. But that father, what did he do? He made a body and he put himself, that spirit, in that body. This is why the Bible says in John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Can you tell your neighbor this morning, all you have to do is just believe. If you will believe, you will not perish. And once you believe, hear me, believing is not just saying it out of your mouth. But believing is what you do. Believing is what you do. You say you got faith and put your money where your mouth is. And do what he says to do. Let your faith speak louder in words. Not only in words, rather, but in your actions in the name of Jesus. He said that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. So child of God, you're not here to be condemned in the house of God. If I say something, I don't want you to feel bad about what I said. But let the conviction touch your heart because God has a desire for your soul to be saved this morning. People of God, he didn't come to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. The title of this message is What About Death? What about death? What about him dying? This is the mindset and the nonchalant stance of the world towards he who died for us. What about his death? What about him loving me? What about the blood? What about the cross? What about the miracles he's done? What about the blessings and the doors he's opened? What about it? What about his word? Especially, watch this, when it comes to us things happening in our life. What about what he said in the word of God? About not assembling, about coming together, and not forsaking rather, the assembling of ourselves together. What about what he said? What about he said be in the house of God? What about David said? I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. What about it? Especially when I got things going on in my life that I'm dealing with it. All that God has said goes out the window. What about what he said? What about it, preacher? What about those who put their lives on the line so that you can hear and that you can get a greater understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ? For those that God has used that you will understand and hear what God has to say. What about his salvation plan? What about being a new creature? What about my family being saved? What about it? As the subtitle says, Jesus, I'll never forget. Can you make it plain? Can you make it to yourself, Jesus? I know they said what about it? They said like they don't even care. What about it? What about his death? But I'm going to tell you, Jesus, I'll never forget. Jesus, I'll never forget. Is there anybody that can join me this morning that can say, Jesus, I'll never forget. Jesus, I'll never forget about the death and the burial and the resurrection. Today, many of the saints of the living God, we get tired of hearing this message about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. People of God, that's the gospel. That's the gospel right there. How are we going to forget about the death and the burial and the resurrection. Without the death, 
you and I would not be here. So when people say, Pastor, what are you preaching today? I'm going to talk about Jesus. In what way? In the death. I'm going to talk about his death. And we don't get to the burial and the resurrection. But when I mention the death, you and I should get excited. Does that make sense what I'm saying? You say, I already know that. Well, you better keep it in your mind. That the only way that you and I are here right now is because of his death. The only way you and I are here right now because somebody died for us. The only way I'm here right now because somebody wasn't nonchalant about me. The only way I'm here right now because somebody does not sleep or slumber. But you and I will go to sleep in the house of God. As soon, as soon it ain't rubbing our funny bone. As soon as it ain't making me church, we go right to sleep. But I'm glad I serve a God that will not slumber nor sleep. I'm glad I serve a God that's not so long about me. I'm glad I serve a God that came and said, I'll go to the cross. And like the preacher said, he didn't come off the cross, but he bowed like the show was all over. I'll say you bowed like the show was all over. Just like when you bow when you're done with the show. He said, it is finished. People of God, I'm so grateful that I serve a God that's not so long about me. He doesn't move not so long. He doesn't take his time. But the mother said he's always on time. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Many of us right now got the attitude and the mindset. What about his death? You say, no, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. We can tell about your praise. We can tell in your worship that we don't come in here giving golf, golf claps. You do that on the golf course. Ain't no Tiger Woods up in here. It doesn't make sense what I'm saying. Ain't no Phil Nichols isn't up in here. You hear what I'm saying. But we come into the house of God in the presence of God. Can you show him who he is and what he is to you? Come on, sister. Can you show him how grateful you are? You say, Pastor, I heard this before. Hear it again. We cannot forget. What about Too great. Brothers and sisters, ask yourself, have we gotten to the place that we are nonchalant about what he has done? Everything that God does, you and I got to say thank you, Lord. Everything that he does. I don't care how small my new you think it is. I don't care what you think it is. I'm telling you, you and I got to thank him. But every we got to move to a place, people of God, that we are so grateful. I told you before, I used to watch Bishop Davy. He would come into the church, stop at the door and rub his feet. But while he's rubbing his feet, he said, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be in the house of God one more time. People of God, we got to get to a place. Come on, God, we begin to move in miracles. When you and I get the heart of thanksgiving, just like you praise God when the music was shouted, was it emotion or was it real true worship? Was it emotion or was it true worship? I went down and tapped for the family conference. I didn't go down there with no emotions, but I went down there because God, we needed to be restored. We need a restoration. We need to be revived. Hell, we need a baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hell, we need a baptism of the fire. Stand up on your feet and let God restore you. Shout out to him with a voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you can't be nonchalant in here. Tell your neighbor, you can't be nonchalant in here. He will not let you be nonchalant. Come on, I need somebody just on one row. I just need one person on one row. I want you to affect your row. Tell your row we ain't nonchalant on this row. Come on, scream at him. Get involved in this service. Get involved in this service. This is the service where it turns around. This is where the service it turns around. We ain't quiet. We ain't sleep. We are lively stones. Around from this day 
turning around from this day forward. Mothers, when you're coming to the house of God, grab the babies, and don't let them sit down. Don't let them sit down doing praise and worship. Don't let them sit down when the reading of the word. Don't let them sit down when the prayers go on. We're not going to come up in here anymore. Do a pre-service prayer, sit down and talk. Come on, somebody, the devil is alive. He's trying to turn the house of God into his place. We worship the true God in this place. Can you do your know his name? What's his name? Let me preach to you, sit down. Okay. Understand, people of God, let me give you these three points and we go home. Okay. Ah, the title of the message, what about? What about is death? If you take that mindset, people of God, that mindset, what about? What about? I'm speaking of the death right now this morning. I'll soon one day get to the burial and the resurrection. You say it's Easter service? No. But we just raise praise and worship the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I can take any day and talk about him. Does it make sense? Hear me what I'm saying. People of God, listen to these. When you and I get to a place where we're in Mount Shalom, what about? What has he done for me lately? What about Jesus? What about his death? What about him? This is why you don't see people coming and running to get baptized. This is why you see mothers saying, I want to get baptized, but I'm trying to wait for Billy, John, and Greg, and Tammy, and all the rest of them for us to all do it together. The devil is a lie. I am to come when I hear the word of God so hard in my heart. Mother, today, mother, today, go down and grab you a robe. Go and grab you a towel and say, today, I'm going down in Jesus' name. Today, I'm going down in Jesus' name. Today, child of God, you got to get the Holy Ghost. Today, elder, you got to get it. Today, father, you got to get it. All you got to do is believe and lift up your hands and say, God, today, I'm changing my stance. No longer, no longer will I be nonchalant. What about, what about, what about, what about, what about? taking on that mindset? Hear me. I'm saying to all of those that are guests and visitors. Maybe you traveled or come just to visit with your brother, your sister, or maybe a friend. And you maybe have not heard this before. But let me testify and tell you before I go to this. I don't know where you come from, but you have been watch this. You've been orchestrated to come to a church where you will hear the true word of God. You say, I've already heard it. Let me make sure you know it. Understand there are many preachers today that will tell you to believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth and all of a sudden you're saved and if you want to get baptized you can go ahead and do that but when they baptize you they might have said to you I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost I come to tell you it wrong that nobody in the scriptures ever were baptized that way you say you're putting me on front street no I'm putting you to a place that God can love on you and that you can be a part of those who have the name Jesus Jesus written on them. How did we get Jesus on us? How did we get the blood on us? Let me show you. I'll never forget. How did I get the blood upon me? Can you pull up Galatians chapter 3 verse 27? How did we get the blood applied? Let me show you how the blood was applied. The Bible says we, we, for as many as of you that have been baptized into Christ. That we, what did we do? We have put on Christ. So when I got baptized, I put on the blood. I applied the blood. That's why everywhere I go, I know it's by the grace of God and by the blood. That's why the enemy cannot consume me. I know when I'm traveling on the highway or I'm flying in the plane, whether I'm going over here or over there, the devil can't just roll up on me because of the blood. Let me show you how the blood works. Hear me what I'm saying. You be, come on. I want you to be that demon trying to get to me. Come here, sir. I need you to be the blood that's protecting me. You don't understand this, but sometimes when you and I are asleep, when I'm laying down and I'm asleep, when I'm laying down and I'm at home and I'm asleep, don't you know that the blood of Jesus is watching over me? The blood of Jesus is right there. But just because I'm asleep doesn't mean that that devil don't want to touch me. 
touch me huh? But because the blood is there huh? You ain't going down to put his hands on me huh? In the name of Jesus huh? That's why when I'm asleep huh? I'm covered in the blood huh? This is why I rest good huh? This is why I go to sleep huh? And I don't got to talk and turn huh? Because faith don't ever touch me huh? Because I'm covered under the blood huh? You don't know what was trying to attack you last night huh? You may not never know what was trying to come in your house You might not know what was trying to come over your child huh? What was trying to choke your child huh? You don't know what was trying to mess with your mind huh? Suck so, so your body huh? Or your body spirit huh? Trying to have sex with you while you were asleep huh? I come to tell you the blood was there huh? I come to tell you that angel of the Lord was there huh? That whatever he tried to do to me and he plotted huh? He plotted the demons to come after me huh? But because of the blood huh? Jesus has Somebody asked the question, thank you. What about this thing? What about this thing? What, what about what Jesus did? I'm telling people about you looking at about this history. History, we forget the history. But I'm telling you, don't forget this. Tell your neighbor, don't forget this. You can forget history, but don't forget this. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Don't forget this. When we pledged, when we were in college, they would say, don't forget the founders. Forget them founders. They ain't found nothing. Jesus found it in the I'm telling you, this whole life, they're going to be mad. Forget every last one of them. Tell them to pay my college tuition. Tell them to pay for what they did to me. In the name of Jesus, you better know. I just read about Jesus. Because what they did to me, I can't forget. Tell them to pay my college tuition. Tell them to pay for what they did to me. In the name of Jesus, you better know. I just read about Jesus. Come on, somebody, let me move forward. Let me move forward in Jesus' name. What about, what about, I'm asking. You take that mindset, it will be like Israel. What about, what did he do? What did he do for Israel? The Bible tells me in the Psalms, uh, Psalms 106 verses 9, uh, known as the scripture people of God, the Bible says this. Uh, I want you to put it there. The Bible says he rebuked the Red Sea. Uh, this is what God did for Israel in the Old Testament. Uh, and the psalmist is speaking about uh, what God in the Old Testament did. Uh, he said he rebuked the Red Sea also. And he was dried up, and it was dried up. So he led them through the depths and through the wilderness. Israel, why did you forget? And he said in verse 10, and he saved them from the hand of him that hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. Israel, why did you forget? Can you, when I read the scripture, I want you to say out of your mouth, saints, Israel, why did you forget? Come on and go with me. Say it right now. Israel, why did you forget? Say it one more time. Israel, why did you forget? When I read the verse, open up your mouth and say, Israel, why did you forget? The Bible says in verse 11, and the waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them left. Come on. They believed they his words. They sang his praise. Go ahead and say it. They soon forget his works. They waited not for his counsel. Go ahead. Israel, why did you forget? But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. Come on and talk to me. And he gave them their request that whatever they wanted, whatever they wanted, ain't that like God? We complain, we get upset, we get mad. God, I want this. God, I want that. God, do this. God, do that. God, do this. Somebody help me pray for this, pray for that. I want this house. I want this car. I want this marriage. I want this. I want healing. My mama, my daddy. I want this. I need this. I want that. But people of God, he gave them requests. But sin lean this into their soul. Open up your mouth and say, they envied the preacher Moses also in the camp and Aaron the saint of God, the saint of the Lord. Come on and say Israel. The earth opened up and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abraham. Go ahead. And a fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. Say it to me again. They made a calf in Horeb, a calf to worship the molten image. They made that calf, that molten image to bow down and to worship. Open up your mouth and say it again. Thus they changed 
change their glory into the solitude of an ox that eateth grass. Come on and say it with me. They forgot that God their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt. Say it one more time. Wondrous works in the land of Ham and terrible things by the Red Sea. Now that we said Israel, why did you forget? I'm going to now ask you, brother and sister, look at your neighbor and say, Now why did you forget? Look at your neighbor and say, Why did you forget? Why did you forget? But if you ain't forgot, lift up your hands and say, I ain't forgot. I ain't forgot. That's why my hands are lifted up. That's why my sister is standing in the back. That's why brother is waving his hand. That's why my sister is holding the child. Waving her hand because we understand. I haven't forgot God. I haven't forgot God. I haven't forgot God. I haven't. Leave me to the second. What about what he did for us? Not just for Israel. What did he do for us? What did he do for all of us? What about his death? What about his death is the reason why we are here today. His death is the reason why we are able to have the choice to be saved. If death is why, his death is why I'm able to love my fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord. His death is why we put our lives on the line for others to be saved. What about his death? Well, the Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Paul said in Corinthians, watch this, chapter 1 verse 18, notice the Bible says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishly. But unto us, you want to know why we shout? You want to know why we get excited? You want to know why I'm always at church? You want to know why I come to prayer? You want to know why we do these things? But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. I'm starting to find out that everybody claiming that they're saved are not really saved. Yes. Because if you were saved, people of God, coming to church would not be foolish to you. Amen. Coming and being in the house of God or singing about the cross or talking about God's death, burial, and resurrection would not be boring to you. Amen. You would not be saying, I wish you would have preached on something else. I had somebody coming and I wanted them to hear something else. Here it is. Tell them to hear this in the name of Jesus. Understand the cross, the blood, the death. It is the power of God. You say, how is the power of God? Because only God can stay on the cross Amen. and be able to go through what he went through. Because there is one of y'all, you and I would have said, for who, for who, for who, I wish I would stay upon this cross. I'm so glad you not Jesus, in the name of the Lord. And Paul, Paul, in our scripture text said these words, let's bring it out. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, uh, put it in the apple fly, blow it up. The Bible says, but God clearly shows, shows and proves his own love for us. By watch the fact that while we were still sinners, do you not know that you a sinner? Do you not know that you and I was doing our dirt? Watch this. That why we were in the club with the music going on. Before you got up and said, oh, that's my song. Before you got to start dancing and said, somebody dance with me. Before you and I start bringing, bringing poor open up that cool one. And before we took a headshot. Before we did that. Watch this. Right when we were going into the sin. God says, that one right there I'm about to die for. Come on, people of God. That one right now, I'm going to die for. Ah, let me get real there. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Ah, before you and I, we was taking off the clothes. Talking about tonight is the night. Hear me, people of God. God was saying, that one right there, I'm going to die for. I know, people of God. You got pain. You got pain on Friday. And you were saying, girl, we going down there to the gambling place. How much you got? I'm going to put about 500 on it tonight. And while we in the Oh, people of God, while you were driving, getting to 
the place. Papa said that we're right there in the car. I'm going to die for them right there. Really what I'm trying to tell you. The one that was sitting there telling the lie. Oh, you a lying. You a lying woman. Oh, you were making up the lie as it was coming out. Oh, and it sounded so much like the truth. Papa said that we're right there. I'm going to die for them. The one that was cursing had the hand in the air just like this. I was pointing down over the person's head. Papa said that we're right there. I'm going to watch this die for them. Hear me what I'm trying to tell you. The elder, the elder that said, you can't teach no old dog tricks. You can't teach me no tricks. I've been there and done it. I said that with an old dog right there, an old dog. I'm going to die for them. That mother that said, listen, I got things I got to do. I got a lot of things in my mind and I things I got to do. God says, I know she don't care about me now. I know she don't care about me. But I'm going to die for that one right there. You and I would have said, for who for that one? Yes, for you and I. So for us to have a nonchalant attitude, what about his death? What about his death? I'm going to tell you what his death did for you and I. I'm going to tell you what it did. It made me whole. It gave me life. It gave my wife life. It gave my family a chance to be Bible safe. It gave healing in my body. It allowed me to see another day. But this is the day that the Lord has made. This is why I'm able to say I'm glad that God has made Oh, oh, oh God, I'm so grateful that all the things you have done for me, when you look back over your life and you think about everything you did, I believe you'll say I don't deserve it. I did deserve it. But oh, I thank you, Jesus. You say, what about his death? Let me tell you, his death is what allowed your breath to be breathing right now. Some of you went through the COVID. Some of you went through sickness. But you're here right now. Some of you went through trouble. But you're standing right here now Some of you thought your marriage was over But it's still together right now Some of you thought mom was not going to make it But somehow an angel went in there Touched her on her head And again the same God Call a king of kings Lord of lords Give her one more day Give her a little bit more time Come on somebody Come on Come on While we were yet sinners, crying, they're crying God for us. Therefore, since we have been now justified, I'm justified, yes, you are. We're declared free of the guilt of sin by his blood. Oh, I was walking, walking with the devil. Come here, sir. Walking with him. He had his head around me. I need you one more time. Stand down there. Oh, we were walking together to hell's fire. Oh, I was condemned. And the devil had his arm on me. And I couldn't do nothing. But there was one particular day. I remember mom said, you remember what Jesus did for you. You remember what Jesus did for you and your mother. You remember it was God that got us out of her. You wouldn't have made it something this far. But while he had his hand upon me, God heard my cry. And I said, Jesus, if you get me out of this, I promise to serve you. And somehow God came and took that yoke off my neck, took that condemnation off of me. I'm so grateful now. I'm walking with my friend named Jesus. Oh, I feel good now. My head was down there. But I'm walking high. I'm walking high. And when I begin to sometimes feel condemned, let me catch you real quick. Whenever you feel condemned, and it start going like this, I got a father that's able to hold me up.
Boy of Wow, we were in it. First ten, Boy of Wow, I'm closing. Wow, we were young enemies. We were reconciled. We were enemies. We were reconciled to God. To the death of his son. It is much more certain. Having been reconciled that we will be saved. From the consequences of sin. By his life. That is, we will be saved because Christ lives today. What about his? What about his death? He loved me before I knew him. When I was a sinner, he died for me. Gave me an opportunity to lift up holy hands. My hands were dirty. He gave you and I an opportunity to hear truth. Because only true have set us free. He gave us an opportunity in America to have freedom of religion. No one will come up in here and pull out guns and tell us that we can't call the name of Jesus or to denounce Jesus. He gave us an opportunity, people of God, to worship him in spirit and truth. He gave me hands that I may clap them together. He gave me feet that I can dance before him. He gave me a mouth that I can speak unto him and tell him I love him. He gave me these things that I can give it back unto him. Whatever song, whatever song that I used to sing, he gave me a song and a voice to sing. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, how you set me free. Jesus, how will you forget? How you brought me out. Jesus, how will you forget? No How can I forget? What you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can we forget how you brought us? Jesus, how will I ever forget? No way. What about us? Brothers and sisters, his death. His death is here. And you and I can be saved. There is somebody here today that needs to stop with the nonchalant attitude. Stop with the mindset of feeling condemned, feeling bad. There's somebody here today and needs not to wait for your family any longer. Yes. Don't wait for your sisters, your brothers. Don't wait for mom or dad. Yes. Don't wait. You don't have to go back to the preacher that preaches Trinity. That's right. Don't go back to the church where they baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. And some will say, all in the name of Jesus. There is no scripture for that. I'm saying to you, why don't you remember what he's done? What about his death? I say to you, what about his death, his burial, and resurrection? It has given you and I life. If you're here today, can you stand? Can we stand? Because we have not forgotten. Can we stand? much required brothers and sisters don't let this fire die in you. we want to open up these altars now for those
those that need to be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ, come now, come on, just come on now. If you don't remember how you were baptized, come on, just come on right now. Minister Smith, go ahead and start taking them to the back. For those that need to be baptized, go ahead and move now. Just go to my left over here. To my left, follow him. If you need to be baptized, the only way that you're going to get to heaven, you must be baptized in the name of Jesus, my sister and brother, elder and mother. The water is ready for you. Come now. Don't just wait. Just go ahead and go now. Brother, if you have never been baptized, you've been here, we don't want to act like we're saved, and we really are not, according to the word of God. Young lady, young man, come on now. Go and get baptized in Jesus' name. God is calling you to baptism in Jesus' name. God is calling you to baptism, sister. Come on now. Come on, just, just have the confidence just to move, just to move. Just have the confidence, I'm just going to go ahead and go today. You cannot forget about what he has done for you. He has given you opportunity to be saved. He's doing it right now. What has Jesus done? What is he doing right now? Giving you an opportunity to be saved. Go ahead and move right now. The robes are there. Towels are there. You say, I just came to visit. I'm not going to be here too long. But before you leave, come on and get baptized. It's not about joining this church. It's about being a part of God's kingdom. Every born again believer must be baptized in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord Jesus, for you to go to heaven, you will not go unless you're born again. Unless you're baptized in that saving name. No matter what preacher told you. No matter what that church told you. Not, no matter what that denomination told you. It is not true. It is not God. It is not. It is not. Paul said, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth in Romans 10 and 9. He is not talking. That's how you and I are in the kingdom. You must be born again of the water and of the spirit. It's okay to confess the Lord. That's the beginning. Believe in your heart. That's the beginning. Now you have to do something. Brother and sister, come if you need the Holy Ghost. Elder, make your way up to the altar if you need the Holy Ghost. Make your way to the altar if you need the Holy Ghost. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Come on, just close our eyes and lift up our hands. Come on, somebody move right now. Close your eyes and just begin to lift up your hands. God is bringing us back to a place that we remember. He's bringing us back to a place that we remember so that we can be revived and restored. Come on, open up your mouth and we're going to pray. But we're going to ask God to forgive us of our sins. We're going to ask God to forgive us of our sins. We're going to ask God to forgive us of our sins. We're going to ask God to forgive us for everything we have said. Everything that is wrong. Everything that is not right. Everything that is not right in God's eyes. Every way that we have behaved and that we have acted. In the name of Jesus, let's pray. Jesus, we come to you now, God, with one plea. And we say to you, God, we're sorry. We're sorry, God, for forgetting. We're sorry for what we have done. We are sorry for what we have said. We are sorry for the posture and the stance that we have taken. We are sorry for being angry at you. We're sorry, God. We're sorry, Jesus. Father, let our mouths match our heart. Please, God, forgive us. Create in us a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within us. Wash us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. What is it that you have me to do? What is it that you want your servant to do? What is it you want your son and daughter to do? What is it, God? Where are you calling us right now? We're calling us, God, where are you calling? Lift up your hands and just say, I surrender. On this Sunday morning, we surrender. On this Sunday morning, I'm here now, God. Devil, it's too late. I'm here now. I heard this word. I heard this word. My family heard this word. God, I thank you for the word. I got a chance to live. I got a chance. I got a chance. I got a chance. I'm going to live today. I'm 
something you understand. Something had this conviction. Now the conviction is born.